Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we'll discuss a very important issue in the neonatal ICU, which is nasal continuous positive airway pressure. The nasal CPAP is the one, the most important non-invasive respiratory support in an ICU. By the end of this lecture, we'll know what is the definition of the CPAP and what is the difference between CPAP and the PEEP. What is the physiological effect of the nasal CPAP? What is the three components of the CPAP? And what is the types of the CPAP? CPAP means application of continuous positive airway pressure throughout the respiratory cycle to spontaneously breathing baby. If we are using the pressure curve, this is the time, this is the pressure, we apply CPAP throughout the cycle. And the baby breathing around this pressure. However, PEEP is the peak end expiratory pressure. Application of positive airway pressure during expiration in mechanically ventilated baby. If we are using the same curve, this is time, this is the pressure. We have here PEEP then increase to PIP in respiratory time, then another cycle, and so on. This is beep, PIP. So CPAP is positive pressure during inspiration, expiration in non-ventilated or spontaneously breathing baby. However, the beep is applied during expiration in mechanically ventilated baby. How does the CPAP work? What is the physiological effect of the CPAP? CPAP prevents the alveolar collapse. This is a corner stone, which increasing the functional residual capacity with improving the oxygenation. Also reduce the alveolar dead space, improvement in the ventilation perfusion ratio, and decreasing the intrapulmonary shunting. CPAP also conserves the surfactant. As CPAP prevents atelectasis, it prevents the release of pro-inflammatory mediators affecting the surfactant function, improves lung compliance, splint and increase airway diameter, which is reflecting on decreasing the resistance, splint the diaphragm, stimulates the lung growth and increasing the lung volume. So what is the functional residual capacity? Functional residual capacity is a secret word or the cornerstone of the CPAP action. Functional residual capacity of the vol is the volume of air inside the alveoli after expiration. It is the sum of residual volume plus the respiratory reserve volume. If we apply to the lung of the preterm babies, as we see, the alveoli have the tendency to collapse, especially at the end of expiration. So the volume of the alveoli is small. If we apply CPAP, so it will extend or distend and recruit the alveoli with higher surface area for gas exchange. If we refer this to the physics, we have Laplace law. So the pressure in sphere, like the alveoli, is twice surface tension inside this sphere divided by the radius. So in a smaller alveoli, or small alveolus, the radius is small, so it's one, Service tension is 3, the pressure will be 6 divided on 1, the pressure will be high. With increasing the diameter and the radius by applying CPAP, especially early, increasing the radius with the same service tension will decrease the pressure double, so the pressure will be 3. So easy pressure to push volume or gas through the alveoli. So 
does this diagram show the effect of under inflation, proper inflation, and the over inflation of the alveoli? If the alveolus is under inflated, the surface area is small, far away from the pulmonary vessels, decreasing the gas exchange and the increasing ventilation preclusion mismatching. With proper inflation, the surface area increases, improving gas exchange, also more contact with the vessels, decreasing the intrapulmonary shunt and the VQ mismatching. However, if we increase the pressure to the very high limit, over distension, make a pressure over the pulmonary vessels, decreasing the pulmonary venous return, which is reflecting on cardiac output after that. So be cautious and use the proper pressure for each disease. This algorithm show the sum or the whole effect of the CPAP. Always remember preventing alveolar collapse, good recruitment, maintain functional residual capacity, decrease VQ mismatching, improving oxygenation, which prevent or decrease metabolic acidosis. Also good recruitment, increasing the surface area of the alveoli, decreasing the alveolar dead space, help in washing in carbon dioxide with improving or decreasing the respiratory acidosis. CBAP also has a uh, uh, mechanical effect by splinting and stabilizing the chest wall and the airway. Both of them decrease the work of breathing and decreasing the resistance of the airway and they prevent the obstructive apnea. When the CPAP pressure reaches the alveoli, stimulate the stretch receptors, which is present also in the pleura. Stimulation of the stretch receptors stimulates the stretch reflex through the, in the respiratory center, so regulating and initiating breathing. And this also decreases the frequency of central apnea. After reviewing the effect of the CPAP, we need to know what is the components of the CPAP system. We have three components. The first is the circuit to provide continuous supply of warm, humidified, and blended gas. The second is the pressure generator. That means the method to the generate the CPAP pressure. And the third is the patient interface. This is the method to connect or deliver the pressure from the circuit to the baby. As we see here, the circuit, we have oxygen and the gas and the air inlet to the blender. The blender blends the oxygen and the air to give us target FI2, how much, starting from 21 up to 100%. Really, we did not exceed 60% in the CPAP. Then the flow meter, controlling how many liters to give into the baby, from 5 to 10. From the flow meter, we have connection to humidifier. Humidifier, warm and dehumidify the gas. Then send it to the baby through inspiratory limb or inhalation limb. Inhalation limb usually has here water trap to collect any evaporated water before reaching to the baby. So after reaching to the baby, there is expiratory limb. Expiratory limb usually is tall in the continuous flow type and the ending by submersion under the water seal or connected to the ventilator. However, the expiratory, this is the circuit for the flow drive type or variable flow type. The expiratory limb here, either it is very small or even absent in subtypes, direct to the atmosphere. 
The second component is the CPAP pressure generator. According to the generator or the method of the generation of the pressure, we have two types of the CPAP, continuous flow devices and variable flow devices. In the continuous flow, the flow, we changing the pressure by other methods than the flow. So increasing or decreasing the flow, mostly not affecting the pressure and we keep it fixed. However, in variable flow devices, the CPAP pressure change it by changing the flow, increasing the flow, increase the pressure, and decreasing the flow, decrease the pressure. Example for each type continuous, the very famous is the bubble CPAP, and you are driving the pressure here by submerging the end of expiratory limb under the water chamber. And the pressure is changing by changing the dips of the end of expiratory when you're increasing the depths, increase the pressure. Another example is the ventilator CPAP, where the expiratory limb is connected to the ventilator and we increase or decrease the CPAP pressure by beep valve. Variable flow CPAP, we have different companies with different names like infant flu driver CPAP or Ben Vincent valve CPAP. More or less the similar technique. The pressure here is delivered by what's called pressure generator. It is just proximal to the nose of the baby. And as we said, it's changed by changing the flow. This example for the bubble bottle for generating the pressure. This is the end of, this is the expiratory limb. This is the end of expiratory limb. By increasing the depth of this end, we are increasing the pressure. This is the level of the water. And we have here numbers to detect how much the pressure. It may be more simpler and handmade like this bottle and we bought tape, measuring tape outside, including the level of the pressure. The example for the pressure generator, this is in variable flow. We have this mid-digit available now in Egypt. Both of them the same. This is disposable and this one is reusable in the right side. The idea is present here, inside this area, for generating the pressure. As you see here, we have an inspiratory limb with increasing the flow. This is a narrow area here, followed by space, chamber. Increasing the flow, increase the pressure inside the chamber here. Then this pressure go to the baby through the interface. The extra ale can go through opening here, which like expiratory valve. This part is connected to the machine to check how much pressure connected there. During inspiration, this is the scenario. However, during expiration, the air comes from the baby, even taking the air coming from the inspiratory and to go through the expiratory opening. More or less the same technique. This is the infant flu driver. This is the inspiratory. This is expiratory and this one to be connected to the machine to check the pressure. The air come here with high flow, enter what's called jet injector, creating the pressure at the nose level. This is during inspiration, like this. During expiration, the come 
the air come outside through this expiratory, this short expiratory, direct to the atmosphere. And this for connection to check how much is the pressure delivered at the nose. More or less like each other with different names, different techniques. The third component here is the interface. As we said interface, how to connect or how to deliver this pressure from the circuit to the baby. Many different types or present. The most famous is the nasal prong, nasal mask, and the nasopharyngeal tube. The nasal prong, we have the Inca and the famous Hadison with different sizes. Also, Fisher and Paykel has very specific nasal prong for his machine. Also, we have Aragile and the many other forms. Silicon, very soft with different sizes according to the baby age, gestational age and weight. The second type of the interface is the nasal mask, also different sizes and we apply outside to the nose like this. The third interface is the nasopharyngeal tube. Actually, it is shortened endotracheal tube. We take measurement from the nose, nostril here to the tragus, and we introduce after lubrication smoothly inside the nose. And we can check the tip of the endotracheal tube by the laryngoscope. Which interface to use? Each interface has advantage and disadvantage. The nasal prong is simple device with the lower resistance and the good transmission of the pressure to the baby. However, it is very difficult and relatively difficult in fixation and near training nerves. Usually we have risk of trauma to the nose, especially to the tip pump. A nasopharyngeal tube or nasopharyngeal prong it is easy available, cheap and economic in comparison to the other two types, can be fixed easily. However, there is tendency to blockage of the internal orifice and the easily kinky, especially in small sizes. And it's traumatic also. Plus, in creating the resistance. The nasal mask has minimal nasal trauma, but more difficult to achieve good sealing. Which interface to use? This is depend on your team. So the NICU team trained for which interface? The availability and the training. All of them are driving the pressure. One have advantage and disadvantage. So according to the training of the team and the availability of the interface. However, the short nasal prong, bilateral nasal prong, are less invasive and they provide least amount of resistance to gas flow and hence also the decreasing the work of breathing. Thank you very much. This is the first part of the presentation, will be followed inshallah by videos for each type. If you have any question, please leave in the comments. Thank you.